What is up boys and girls? So you're joining me on a quick adventure today. I went out in search of a campsite ready for the summer. So I found a nice little place, which I believe is a, there's a Facebook group for people that live in my area, foreign riders, and this is the campsite that I think they use. However, I just thought, I'd just have a quick walk down to the river and have a look. And I think, now maybe I've been watching Pioneer poorly too much, but that looks like gold to me. So, let me come across the river a little bit. Can you see that? Can you see all this? Let me try and scoop up some, put it in my hands. Is this gold? Look, look at that on my finger there. Is that gold? I mean, that is gold colour, there's no doubt about it. But is it real gold? Or fool's gold? Anyhow, I am going to go and get myself a sieve. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a sieve and do some Pioneer Pauly style gold hunting. Holy shit, that like all the way up the river as well. There's tiny little pieces of gold all the way. And it's all collecting here in these rocks. I'm rich, boys. I'm going to go and get myself a brand new 1290 Super Duke tomorrow. All right. Well, anyway. Let's get on with today's bike adventure. All right then. So, there's the campsite down there. I brought my drone with me today, so I will put some drone shots on now. It's a lovely place. It's uh, just coming towards the end of March and it's still a bit chilly, but uh, when the wind stops, it's lovely and warm. So uh, in the summertime, it should be really nice here down by the river. Nice. There's some tree cover as well, so it shouldn't be too hot. Should be able to get some shade. Like 20 bikes down here, some tents put up, drink some beers. Fun times to be had. So anyway, I am, where am I exactly? I kind of don't really know, but I'm in the Toyota area. I don't know what the village is called or the town or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's uh, got fantastic roads. And I'm going to take the juke for a bit of a blast so let's go and have some fun some riding to do. So 
So boys and girls, today is the first time I've actually ridden the Duke uh, properly, i.e. on on some twisty roads rather than just driving, riding to work every day. So I've sort of got um, a good impression of the bike today and basically, yeah, it's almost perfect apart from a small uh, dip in the power between like four and five or between four and six anyway. Apart from that, with a remap or, you know, like exhaust, maybe a filter and a, a remap, I think this bike would basically be perfect. I haven't even touched the suspension yet, even though it's, you know, white power, WP, fully adjustable front and rear. I haven't even touched it because I haven't found any issues with it yet. Now, the tyres that are on here, I'm not too confident in, so I'm not pushing it too hard. But I think in the summertime, when I get some nice new sticky rubber, then it'll be time to adjust the suspension. But basically, it's, for me anyway, it's the perfect bike. The riding position is awesome, the ground clearance is awesome. Like if I'll show you my chicken strips later, but I've been riding you know reasonably hard and I'm nowhere near, near the edge of the tire. Whereas on the MT07 I was almost always on the edge and it was kind of dangerous, like you know, losing the back end a few every now and then. So I think this um, just the base the basic geometry and the setup of the bike is just great. It's so flickable. It's unbelievably nice. It sort of handles... The, t the steering is like a sports bike. You know, like you can just... Just now, like, you can just do whatever you want with it. But because you're in an upright position, it's just a lot easier to, to do. I don't know, this is almost what I imagine a Tuono would be like even though that's kind of like a super bike that's stripped down and this is not this is kind of designed to be a naked from the beginning from the design process but just everything about it just feels great to me the brakes are awesome too this is the early model so it doesn't have the uh, radial mounted brakes so that was kind of something i was bummed about I, you know i thought the, the brent the brembo radials would be so much better than these but I've got no complaints to be fair. These brakes are freaking awesome. You can, st thank you, sir. You can stop it so easily, and it's so um, like intuitive. It's not scary doing a stoppy. Like on on the MT07, obviously it was an ABS bike, so you couldn't really do them very well. You had to be really basically you just come to a stop to do a, to do a stoppy. You know, like 10 miles an hour, throw your weight over the front and do a stoppy, and then basically come to a stop but this thing you can just you can easily do rolling stoppies on this it feels like a super a big supermoto I mean obviously KTM that's what they're known for right off-road bikes then supermoto bikes and now these hyper naked things whatever you want to call them but the feel the feeling is there like the DNA is there obviously KTM are Stigler, I suppose you could say Stiglers. They they want to make enjoyable bikes, and they don't really compromise too much. I'll try and do a quick stop here. <laughs> Only a small one, but it's just so easy. Like that's the the th today. I just thought oh, I'll try and do a stoppy. So I did one stoppy this morning. Then I tried one again at lunchtime. I was like, oh, this is pretty easy. And that was my third stoppy. So with a bit of practice, I'll probably get pretty good at stoppies on this bike. Now, if uh, James Allport, Binda, if you're watching this, you probably probably will remember the day you taught me how to do stoppies. You remember that VFR 400 outside the pub in Oxford? We'd had a few beers. You kept telling me to go faster, so I did. Then you kept telling me again, go faster, so I did. And then what happened? I went straight over the front and broke my engine case. <laughs> I think I rode your firestorm home that day. Oh shit, what's going on here? No, nothing. So yeah, basically I am in love with the bike. The only things I really want to change is, uh, that, well that's a temporary mirror. That was just the one I had lying around the home. So I want to get some 790 Duke mirrors that go under, not the over ones. Uh, new chain of sprockets, new tires, probably some upgraded brake pads. And that's about it really. Yeah. 
So I came here last time, there's a little shrine up here. I might stop here and have a have a coffee from my thermos and a quick smoke before I get on home. But yeah guys, basically I'm in love with the bike. And I would suggest, I would recommend one of these to anyone. Anyone who has not got the budget to buy a brand new 1290 Super Duke, like me, then this bike is awesome. I don't think I told you how much I paid for this bike, but I got 300 and how much? 350,000 I think for my CBR 600. So the money that I had from that paid for this bike, paid for the transportation of picking it up, paid for all that, the documentation like name change and all that stuff. So basically this awesome, awesome bike has basically cost me the equivalent of let's say 3,000 US dollars. Ten thousand. Now it's got 11,000 kilometers on it because I put about 500 on it. An 11,000 kilometer, fairly clean, fairly tidy 2007 KTM Super Duke 990 for 3,000 dollars. You cannot go wrong. So guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next video. As always, don't forget to hit that like button. Be so kind as to share. And if you're feeling really generous, subscribe to my channel. Or is it this? I'm not sure. Maybe this. See you guys. Goodbye.